G'day world, I'm Coram E. Today I'm with Ken Rosen from Air One. And they've given me this fantastic hat here. I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, but what I'm even more excited about is the amazing aircraft. Now, literally behind our great cameraman, Gil, thanks mate, is the aircraft itself, but it's all extremely top secret. Cannot show you, unfortunately. So it's in the warehouse behind you. But uh, what we do have is this amazing scale model and we're gonna go around some of the aircraft features, some of the design elements. First of all, for those that don't already know, this is a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, yeah? Uh, but it also has this amazing wing, which is an important design factor because that means the aircraft can produce lift in forward flight, uh, which is making it a lot more efficient than yeah. other airframe designs you'll see out there that are exclusively yeah. vertical takeoff and landing. Was, was the wing design element always a part of the design for you? Yeah, there was always a, the... You know, the purpose of, we were trying to find a way, I was trying to find a way in the early days yeah. of extending the range of uh, multi-rotors. Sure. Uh, obviously by adding a wing, but without making them more complicated. We see yeah. a lot of eVTOL designs that, you know, took the initial, I think, uh, thinking behind multi-rotors and they use yeah. uh, differential thrust for hovering. They're highly complex, right? Yeah. And, and, but in order to transition, yeah. The crews, they, yeah. they become highly complex. They sure. either add additional, uh, you know, thrusters, yep. and they and and they have like the, uh, they have wings with uh, conventional conventional control surfaces. So yeah. they need to transition from flying like a, like a drone, like yeah. a motor rotor, to flying like an aircraft. And yeah. in between, it's not always that simple. Uh, or they tilt everything. Yeah, so that's an interesting design element of your aircraft is it's a fully static airframe, yeah? None of these control surfaces, yeah. tilt, shift, yeah. no rudder control, yeah. everything's done by differential thrust, is that no. the, the term for...? Not differential thrust, but differential RPM Yeah. in our case because there isn't, even the propellers are fixed pitch propellers, we don't Right, use. they're all fixed pitch too, yeah. 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 So it's just the okay. RPM. Okay, so this is, this is the only variable... Uh, Energy yeah. component. The, the on only the thing, frame. the only, I mean, it's like critical component moving in the aircraft is like the, you know, is the, is the, is the axis of the, yeah. each, each motor spinning with okay. the propeller on it. And these are designed with uh, a motor in the top and a motor in the bottom. Yeah, there are is eight, that correct? eight separate so motors. Eight motors all around, which mm -hmm. is good for redundancy, yeah. load reduction, yeah. smaller motors as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. A little yep. smaller than if you would try to put one. To put the one, one yeah. The, also, yeah. better redundancy, better control. The directions are opposite. So it's yeah, there's a con contra rotating. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they'll rotate in that fashion. Yeah, there and, we and go. it also allows us to, you know, take the energy from four separate batteries, so that we have a lot of redundancy. Yeah. In terms of the, of the power source. Sure. So um, the independent. Motors are powered from independent batteries to two motors per battery. Two motors per battery, uh, which is just helping in the event of a, yeah. a, a very unlikely event of a failure of a component even, on board. Even a, a full battery or full power yeah. system. Then you've still got a measure, a good measure of control for a controlled descent. You'll barely notice the difference. Right. To be honest. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, yeah. cool. So you could complete the mission as per normal. You can. If yeah. You should probably land as soon as possible. You should probably land as soon as possible. But the aircraft, as far yeah. as the pilot is concerned, it, it's, it's going to behave it's, it's gonna perform just very the similarly. same. The landing is going to be. Uh, the same landing that you always do. There, there, there are no, you know, emergency pro procedures. You sure. don't need to fly the aircraft in a different way, like yeah, you, you, like we're you know pilots are used to from conventional aircraft when yep. there's a series. Like failure. a single prop. If you always behave yep. the same, the pilot always only needs to do one thing, and that's the same thing that he does every flight. And that's a pretty important factor, and one of the things that this style Avitol has an advantage over conventional helicopters. Yeah. If any one component of 1500 on a helicopter fails, then yeah. you have a very uh, messy landing uh, yeah. immediately, right? And which often involves fatalities, where uh, a component failure on this sort of aircraft is, yeah. is a much safer situation. Yeah. Because there's so few components, it's yeah. a lot easier to predict the failure modes. Sure. And we can, and we design the aircraft with every conceivable spontaneous failure available not yeah. not crashing the air the, air, yeah. the, the aircraft in okay? conventional uh, aviation it's okay to design an aircraft so if something critical fails then the pilot needs to compensate for that in skill right and we don't do that no no the, so the it's, it's always fly the design will compensate and, and for even itself if something very unforeseen you know, you know, happens then, then you have a, a ballistic parachute of course, but that's, as an ultimate redundancy. We're not taking credit for that yeah. in the design, in the design yeah. of the aircraft, seriously. Sure, sure. 
Uh, okay, so a, a couple more things. Can we talk about the potential evolution of this airframe a little bit? Uh, sure. Maybe a little bit. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, we're, we're currently very, very focused sure. on what we're doing, which is this two-seat aircraft. Yep. And As in the, the those couple of d design transitions um, that we spoke about earlier. I don't know how much of this is top secret. So no, it's okay. <laughs> so there's some um, there's some things. This is an early iteration of uh, of the Air One eVTOL, and some things may change. Um, there's a bit of progressive tail designs. Dynamic evolution that happens here. Yeah. Okay. As as you expect with every design, we now have uh, we have we now have more experience. We, we yeah. started flying with the with the existing demonstrator, yeah. and we're learning a lot both from the flight and even from the design process okay. and from constant analysis that we're doing. So everything is evolving. We're, we're trying to make things better all the time without making too big of bigger bigger too big sure. steps. So, you know, not, not to depart from what we already know and what is proven. That's an evolutionary, not yeah. revolutionary. Exactly. Uh, so this tail design might change a little, but uh, these are all a, a static airframe design, yeah? So this um, yeah, tails, there's no rudders. You'll still recognize it. It will yeah. still, you know, the proportions are very similar. Very similar, yep. You still have the twin tails, the arms, the wings. Yep. It's not all about performance. We're trying to make it comfortable. We're trying to make it very robust, yep. very reliable, easy to maintain. Very very safe. Sure. Uh, and we want, to, and we also want it to look good. Okay. Yeah. You're spending a lot of money on an aircraft right. like this. Right. The the same amount of money will buy you a very nice car. Sure. Yeah. And we don't want the person to that buys it to feel that you made a compromise yeah, even in yeah. that area when spending this amount of money. We want yeah. to, we want you to be proud of. We're going to have that sports car, yeah, that European you sports car our, feel. Exactly. Yeah. That supercar both, feel. Both in and out. Yeah, yeah. So lots of trimmings and detail inside the cabin. And, and, and a spacious cabin. Yeah. And you know, something that's comfortable something and I air did, conditioned. Yeah. Something I definitely noticed on the, the cabin, again, that's behind the camera that you can't see because it's top secret. But uh, the, the canopy that folds down, the visibility area is yeah. enormous. We've got the huge visibility yeah. panel through the floor, which is yeah. nice for landing and takeoff. Yeah. And then just a huge dome canopy. So yeah, we want to, at the beginning, when we started talking about this aircraft, we, we talked about, it, we wanted to give you the experience of, you know, riding a dragon. Yeah, right, so okay. Be, yeah, we want to be... Riding a dragon. I love be, that. That is so good. You want to be out there. <laughs> you want to be able, you know, to see all around you to really get, you know, the, 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 the yeah. entire experience of being out in the air on one hand. Yep. And on the other hand, still gives you, give you a cocoon which is, is, is safe. Yes. And will also make you feel safe and comfortable. Yeah. So that's... Something that um, I've heard mentioned a couple of times as I've been learning about this aircraft is the the software envelope. Uh, yeah, which envelope is, protection, yeah. Yeah, th this is kind of really important. Like, as you'd expect in a, a brand new car, it's very hard to crash a new car, right? Yeah. There's um, this anti-collision yeah. forward protection, there's warnings if you're approaching or lane departing unexpectedly, and all of those same sorts of things that quite relatively quite easy to put in an aircraft. Yeah. It's surprising how many light sport and smaller aircraft don't have yeah. any sort of these safety systems. Yeah, that, that's because, you know, aircraft up until now, the, the, for, I think for 100 years now, yeah. the uh, flight control was always mechanical. Always, yeah, so it was, okay, sure. It, it's, you, you are seeing in some aircraft with, with, uh, with autopilots, you yeah. are seeing things that advance it there. But uh, our very basic Flight control system is a fly-by-wire system. Yes. You have to have that. If you're doing yeah. differential thrust control, you need to have a computer in the way. Yep. So we're taking advantage of that and we're putting limitations yeah. that, for example, limit the attitude that you can reach. So yeah. you, you cannot, if you don't want to, you cannot flip the aircraft upside right. down. Yeah. Okay? You cannot put it in a descent rate which is dangerous. You cannot overload it in terms of, of G-load. Yeah, sure. It will always it was always limit that and always limit the rates and yep. the attitude that you can reach and therefore it's very safe. There is no stalling. Actually Technically, there is stall. Technically, the wing, the, yeah. The wing will stall every time that you transition, but you don't feel you but don't you care don't about it. But you don't feel it because it's compensated for exactly. by the differential exactly. thrust. Yes, yeah. so and that's important. That's going to really help build confidence in new and early aviators. Yeah. So the, the learning curve for this type of aircraft is going to be dramatically smoother, and it's going to help new pilots fly much safer, much exactly. quicker. So as the sky gets a little bit busier, which is a high likelihood in our electric aviation future, is more and more personal recreational eVTOL aircraft are out and about. Uh, they're going to be probably operate a lot safer than yeah. aircraft in the past because you don't need to have hundreds and hundreds of hours of experience to fly this very safely. Yeah, because you'll have a lot more attention 
towards you know where you're flying at and yeah. looking outside because this is an yeah. aircraft that, that when you fly you don't need to constantly you know we're used to conventional aircraft again yeah. we're used to always you know doing these small corrections and always yeah. staying coordinated and and you don't need that here once you put it in a, in, a, in a certain you know you want to fly there you put it you put your nose where you want to fly yep. and it will stay at that altitude and, and cruise yeah. uh, towards the location that even without putting the autopilot and the autopilot will give you additional capabilities like you know pointing to a location and it will fly there like any autopilot that you can install yeah. in other aircraft and obviously you have you know a glass cockpit with all yep. the goodies that you already we already see in other aircraft with the, you know uh, terrain warning yep. and, and and traffic and weather yep. everything combined there so I think this will make uh, you know, flying a lot safer, you know, much better awareness of everything that happens around you. You have a lot more attention to that. Yeah, so, and something I noticed was the way your, your gauges, the way your, your cockpit essentially is in this, yeah. uh, is very different to a conventional airframe design, an aircraft yeah. design. Instead of everything being in front of you and somewhat obstructing your visibility. Yeah. Actually, we'll, we'll go and have a look at the, the mock up here. Briefly, um, this is a, a bit of an example of the layout. Obviously, this is a skin mock-up as a part of the simulator, uh, but it does give a bit of an idea. There are no gauges in front of you as the pilot, right? So your view is not obstructed at all, yeah. like it typically would be. You, you don't, you're not you're not dependent as gauge on gauges as you are in a conventional aircraft. Yeah. Because you don't have any, you don't have a stall speed. Sure. Nothing's going to happen if you're going to fly slower. You can, you can come yeah. to a dead stop in mid-air. You can fly backwards. Yeah. So you're not as dependent of an airspeed right in front a of you as you would, or, or, or in a, yeah. an angle of attack, uh, or, 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 or the attitude, for example, because yeah. your stick is always your attitude. If sure. the stick is centered, then your attitude is zero. All you have to do is let go of the stick, exactly. and it recenters. So it's not that we're not giving this information. It's still yeah. there. You still have the standard six on a on a glass. Yeah, on a glass. Cockpit. And that's just off but to the side. It's going to be the, either the side or, 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 or to the center. Or central. Well, we want to yeah. keep the you know the space just in front of you unobstructed. Yeah, of course. To give you again. It's, it's, it's both the experience and also a comfortable field, field of view, both forwards and downwards yeah. when you're approaching to it. Yeah, absolutely. Maximum visibility. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and we spent a little bit of time in the simulator earlier. Uh, that was really cool. I'll probably cut in a little bit of footage of that. And uh, the simulator was amazing. With this aircraft being completely fly-by-wire yeah. in the real world, it actually makes it... The simulated version is, is probably a very, very accurate representation of how the aircraft yeah. will fly. Especially as you refine the simulated yeah. version. It's still in development, of course. Yes. Uh, but th that's going to give you a very, very accurate yeah. experience of flying the aircraft. I was able to land it uh, three times without crashing. That's a, that's a good start, right? Uh, back to the, the simplicity of the cockpit of this. Um, uh, people that already follow this channel know that we fly a couple of electric aircraft already in Australia. We've got the electric fixed wind uh, Pipistrel aircraft, yep. which is no liquid fuel, just battery. Instantly, that cockpit is much simpler. There's a lot less gauges. We're yeah. paying attention to a lot less pressures and temperatures, and it's yeah. all on one small, compact, convenient display. Those indicators will be reduced even further with this aircraft, yeah. right? So, because as you mentioned, um, the airspeed indicator is less crucial and, and doesn't need to be multiple versions thereof. Yeah. So, uh, so a really, really compact indicator with your artificial horizon uh, and all yeah. your main power level indicators will be all you need and, and you've got this big beautiful sports car feel of a, of a beautifully trimmed and, and because you have computer system both monitoring the batteries and, sure. and, the, and, the, and the engines yeah. then these systems are they're looking at you know the temperature they're watching the gauges for, you. for yeah. you so once yeah. if something begins to do to evolve then yep. to develop then then you will get Bring a your warning. attention of course we, we, we want to move forward from you know from the from the current state, where as a pilot you need to, to do a, every, yeah. every 30 seconds to do a check. Yeah, your eyes are up and down and up and down. You need to, to be with your head outside, you yes. need to be you know, in touch with the environment. Yep. And, and the aircraft, and the systems in the aircraft need to monitor. And there's a lot of data there. There, there are practically hundreds of sensors. Yeah, sure. Even in the demonstrate that we have today, we have, we have over almost 200 temperature sensors just in the batteries. Wow. Just, just to okay. you know, put things in perspective. But we don't have 200 temperature gauges, we don't even one have one yeah sure okay the, the system compares everything and it looks for anomalies and yeah until there's an anomaly it's not relevant to, really is to it? develop it will, it will give you a warning say yes. something's not right and as soon as practical yeah. a lot of the world is as excited as i am to see this thing flying yeah. you can check the other videos and you can check the website uh, air one's website links below uh for the early flight test videos of the of the actual flight test aircraft 
and then there's a, a static demonstrator as well which is in, in full trim so you can see how the aircraft will be kind of finished and, and how it will present as a finished aircraft. Uh, so definitely hit all the links below and, and check out Air's other links and Air's YouTube channel and our other videos as well. To learn more and more about this aircraft and as there's more flight tests uh, available, we'll do more content and get more information to you and follow the evolution of this aircraft and hopefully have it to market in Australia, uh, which is obviously my, my focus. We, we want it in Australia as soon as possible. Maybe if we're lucky as early as 2024, Let's see. That's, a, that's an optimistic. I like yeah, that. No, okay. We'll be there. All right. Thank you very much, Ken. You've been amazing. I've learned a lot today. Uh, thank you for communicating everything you have about the aircraft thank and teaching me to fly it in the simulator. And um, next time, hopefully, we can fly for real. <laughs>